Now let's talk about owner financing, or some may call it seller financing. Owner financing is probably the most common term, but seller financing is just the same. It's used, they're used interchangeably. And I wanna show you how I use it in my real estate business and how you can do and make you so much money because you're not utilizing banks, you're doing everything differently than normal people would. Now my name is Dustin Heiner with Master Passive Income. I help people to quit their job by investing in real estate rental properties so they never, ever, have to work a job again. And that's what I want to do for you. I want to show you how to do that. And we do this by investing in rental properties that make us $250 or more every single month. And the way we do that is we calculate our expenses, we calculate how much we could rent the property for, and we make $250. So it's expenses, minus, your income minus your expenses, that difference is your passive income. And I want to show you how to invest in real estate and buy rental properties and make $250 or more every single month. I want to give you my free course. If you go to masterpassiveincome.com forward slash free course, it's all one word, forward slash free course, I will give you my free real estate investing course where I'll show you how to analyze deals, how to find properties, how to make sure you scale your business so you can quit your job and everything about it and even how to invest out of state, how to find the right property managers, everything you need, go to Master Passive Income dot com forward slash free course get my free course so you can get started now i want to talk to you about owner financing and how amazing owner financing is and some people might say well it's hard to find owner financing well honestly it, it kind of is because there's less or there's fewer properties that are with owner financing or seller financing but at the same time they are out there and there are strategic ways to actually find the seller financing. Now, before we get into how to find it, let's talk about what the seller financing and owner financing actually is. So remember, if you're going to buy a property, you're going to get a mortgage and a realtor and you're a mortgage broker and a realtor and you're putting together, you're going to buy a property. Well, normally we think we have to go through a bank to buy a property. Most of us don't have a couple hundred thousand dollars of cash to buy a property. So we would go to a bank. Now, the bank would give us a loan, basically give us a note, a mortgage on that property, and we'd have to negotiate with them, you know, how much we're going to pay every single month by how much interest we're going to be paying and what our interest rate's going to be, how many months or how many years, what's the term of the loan, all that, how much down payment. We're going to have to negotiate all that sort of stuff that you're going to need to do in your business when you're buying your property. Now, with seller financing, it's basically getting financing where you're using the property as the bank and the owner as the bank. They're going to finance the property for you, just like they are the bank. So let's say the property is worth $100,000. The seller, the owner is saying, you know what, I wanna sell it to you. Um, we're gonna have, a have, have to have a down payment. I will give you an owner financing note. I'm gonna give you a mortgage for it. Now what they're gonna do is they're gonna, you, you and them, you're gonna negotiate out how to, uh, basically everything about the mortgage, the note that they're gonna be giving you. Now it's not gonna be a bank. It's not gonna have underwriting like a bank. There's so many issues with underwriting, which is the company and the bank trying to analyze everything and make sure that you are you have the right debt to income ratio and all that sort of stuff. But owner financing, you don't have to worry about that. You don't even have to worry about your credit score. The owner is the one saying, yes, I'm going to allow you to buy this property and pay me over time as if I'm the bank. So there's a few things you're going to want and you're going to need to negotiate with the seller or the owner. Number one would be the purchase price. Obviously, you got to know how much you're buying the property for. Another one, would be how much the down payment would be. You may even have a owner saying, you know what, no down payment. Like We don't need a down payment. We just are interested in the monthly. So you would have a no down payment. That's possible. You might even have 10%, 5%, or just they might say, give me a $10,000. That's a down payment. The rest we're going to finance. The next thing is going to be the interest rate of the loan. So whatever you're borrowing, how much interest is going to be attached to that. Another one is going to be how long What's the term? How long is the mortgage going to be? Is it going to be a 10-year, a 15-year, a 30-year note? You want to make sure that you have that all accounted for because you need to calculate how much you're going to be paying every single month. Another thing that you would want to consider is any seller concessions or um, financing concessions where the seller says, well, um, I know that needs a new roof in the next you know, two years. I'll give you a, a half the credit. So it's $3,000 to um, $6,000 to actually fix it and repair the roof and get a whole brand new one put on. We'll give you $3,000 credit. And so that's going to be a concession. So that could be something that you can talk to them about. It's a little tip I want to give you. All the ones are... Any title work, who's going to be paying for the title fees and the closing costs that might be wrapped into the loan. You might be able to do that too, but you need to negotiate. 
negotiate that as well. So also who will pay it? Not just where you're doing the title and, and everything, but who's going to pay those closing fees. And the last one is if you're going to have to refinance the property afterwards. And now not just refinance, let's say that the owner, another thing you might negotiate is, is there a balloon payment at the end of five years? So you have a 30 year mortgage and it's amortized over 30 years. But in five years, you have to make a balloon payment. So basically, that's a couple big words. But what it really comes down to is you have a 30-year mortgage with that, that owner. You're going to make payments as if you're paying all 30 years on, on so it's like, let's say it's $800 a month for 30 years because it's, it's the mortgage payment is brought out over 30 years. So it brings the price down to, or the mortgage payments down to $800. Well, after five years, the seller is saying, after five years, I want you to buy me out. I don't want to go the rest of 30 years. I want you to give me a balloon payment. And you might be thinking, oh my goodness, I have to come up with that cash. No, you don't. In those five years, so you have 30 years, say five years, you just refinance. In the middle there, pull the cash out, give it to, or you don't actually do that. It'll basically be a refinance. The money will go right to the owner, just like you're refinancing a mortgage. Exact same thing. So that's another great way. If you have, if they want a balloon payment, don't worry about the balloon payment. We refinance it because it's going to be in your name. You're going to have it and you're going to be able to talk to the bank and be able to move on a mortgage so that you can get that property out of the owner financing if you want to. Now, if they want a 30 year note, then great. You're going to be paying them for 30 years, which is fantastic because we're not worrying about mortgages and all that sort of uh, PMI, uh, private mortgage insurance, all that sort of stuff. We're not worrying about that. We're just working directly with the seller. And with owner financing, this can be done with anything, not just real estate. Let's say car. I don't know. I, I have never heard of many people doing this, but it's literally somebody else owns the car. You pay them until a certain, you get, they give you a note or a, a loan on it, basically. And you pay them monthly instead of you actually paying them or getting a, a loan from a bank. It's the exact same thing. So if you want to buy real estate, even if you want to buy land, just raw land, you can absolutely do that too. Now, the question comes up is where in the world do I find these owner finance properties? You know, it's not like, you know, people are just waving a flag saying, hey, Hey, come over here. Well, there are some great places to start. Number one, the MLS, the multiple listing service. They literally have inside the description, they would if they already want to have owner financing as an option, the owner would put in the description saying owner financing available or seller financing available or ask about owner financing or something like that. So you can literally search for that and just watch for those keywords inside the MLS. Another one is talk to real estate agents. Talk to brokers, real estate agents, and see if they know of any any properties that are owner financing or seller finance because those are great ways to buy properties. I'll give you an example. I bought off of an investor three single-family homes and a duplex, a, oh, and I used owner financing. I gave him $25,000 down and the rest in a seller finance or an owner finance note. And what's fantastic about that is with that $25,000 down, that's all I had to pay out of my pocket. Now, I had I was blessed to have enough money to buy this because I'm an investor, but I was able to buy that. Now, what's great is I didn't have to get a loan for anything else. With buying it owner financing, I am able to make $1,500 a month in passive income from this property. And once that note is paid off, it's because I'm giving monthly, I'm giving money to the seller. Once that note's paid off, I'm going to be making about $2,100 on this entire deal from buying it. And it's just $25,000 down. The great thing is it's already rented. These properties are rented, that money coming in. So whatever the balance is, my tenants are paying that. I'm not paying. The only pot money out of my pocket was $25,000. That $25,000 went to, to the seller. The rest of the thousands of dollars went came, came from the, the tenants through me every single month to the seller. It's a fantastic way to go. Now, another great way is through Zillow.com. Through Zillow.com, check out this website. Now, what you're looking at is the website that shows basically all the listings, as many as it can find, anything from the MLS, the multiple listing service, to um, for sale by owners, uh, foreclosures, auctions. They try to list every single property on here. Now, I'm going to give you a huge hack. This is a, a huge tip that everybody, uh, mo most people won't even think about. But if you're watching this, as you fill in your criteria of what type of property you're looking for, click on the more button. And it might change over time, but click on it to where you can filter out the properties even more. Look down at the very bottom. It could say keywords or description. Literally type in there, owner financing. 
or seller financing and click apply and see what properties that have that in the description. That is going to be the easiest way for you to look for properties that have owner financing from, you know, drinking coffee from your desk in the morning. You know, you wake up in the morning, uh, look at, I'm going to go get some coffee, look at the newspaper. Let me look for owner financing. Boom. You use Zillow and you have the ability to find owner finance properties. Now it's up to you to negotiate with them, talk to them and make sure that they are, uh, you know, all the negotiating of terms and all that sort of stuff. Now, a question would come up is what type of contract should I use for owner financing? Well, really, it's just a purchase contract. Basically, you're going to put a purchase contract out with the owner and you're going to stipulate in their seller financing. On top of that, what you're going to want to do is itemize out in that contract the, everything you negotiated from the, the purchase price, the terms, like how long it's going to be, with interest rate, what the payments are going to be, even put the amortization schedule. That's how much you're going to be paying every single month for the entire time. How you know Any balloon payments, seller concessions, all that sort of stuff. You want to put that in the contract, but it's basically a purchase contract. Go to my website, see the description where you can go and get my um, purchase contract on there as well. Um, and so, plus, it's every, it'll have everything written out, uh, and even much more so than I'm actually talking on on uh, the screen right now. And so, go to my site because all you're really going to need is a purchase contract, and you're going to need the amortization schedule, which I have that for you as well. Now, you're also going to want to have the seller financing addendum. It's an addendum, basically an attachment to the contract. That's where your amortization schedule, that's where your payments, is basically a seller financing addendum that you're going to want to have as well. Now, with that, you're going to want to be able to change the property from the seller into your name with a deed of trust and a mortgage with a promissory note. A promissory note is basically a mortgage, just like you would do with the bank. They are basically, you're saying, I'm paying this, I own this property, but I'm paying this guy, this gal, this owner, this bank. And if I don't pay, they can take back the property. So you want to make sure you get the deed of trust put it in your name and have a mortgage mortgage on it, a promissory note. Now you might be thinking, you know, is seller financing or owner financing a good idea for me and my business? Well, absolutely. If it's done right, it's fantastic for your business. You save loads and loads of money. You get the tenants to pay for the actual purchase of the property. So many great things about um, owner financing and seller financing. But the thing is that banks usually ask 20% down when you're buying a property. Homeowners, you can negotiate. Instead of 20%, they might say, okay, we're going to start at 15%. You can say, well, how about 5%? You work your way down to maybe 8 9 10% down instead of the 20%. Or sometimes it can be as high as 25%. You can negotiate your interest rate. You can negotiate all that sort of stuff. That's what's great because banks... They have underwriters. They have people that look at the mortgage and they have criteria that they have to go by. How much it must be, um, how much, what's the dollar amount it must be, like a minimum of $50,000, how much the down payment must be, how much your debt to income ratio, which I talk about on my site, go to there as well. Um, and I'll actually try to put that in the description as well. The um, debt to income ratio and how that affects you. So many other things that banks have to worry about with seller financing. They don't worry about that stuff. You know, they can, but you can negotiate all around that. Now, now, I want to talk to you about little things that could be or little. I want to talk to you about some things that you could be detrimental or that you could find as being, oh, man, I wish I would not have gotten into seller financing or owner financing. Um, so let me show you the problems that can come up with owner financing. If you don't pay your mortgage, the seller can repossess, basically foreclose just like a bank would on the property and get it back. So obviously, you have to pay your debts. You have to make sure you pay for the, the property every single month so they do not go back and actually take the property from you. You don't want that. Another big one is if you try to buy a property that is not owned by the person trying to sell you. Let's just say, and God forbid this happens, you find a property, somebody is listed it on Zillow for sale by owner, owner financing, great. You think that this guy actually or this gal actually owns the property, but she's a shyster. She's trying to steal your money. In fact, I've seen this many times where somebody puts it on there for sale saying that they're the owner, you work with them, you give them your down payment of $10,000 or whatever it might be, you go to close and it re you realize that it's not in that person's name. Like they can't, they don't actually own it. It's a scam. So what you want to do, way to get out of that is making sure that you're talking with the actual owner 
And then you do title search, like title work, which means you basically have a title company do the search on the title, make sure that they are the actual owners and that they have the ability to sell it. On top of that, you have a contract. If you don't have a contract, you don't have it written down. The bad thing is if you don't have it written down, it's not enforceable because it's hearsay. It's like, oh, his word, my word or her word, my word, whatever it might be. It's not enforceable. You need express written contract that shows everything, itemize everything out. And so you want to watch out for that as well. Another thing that you want to watch out for is that balloon payment. That balloon payment could come due and all of a sudden you're like, oh my goodness, the balloon payment's due. I don't have any money. Well, you should have been refinancing it from day one. You're trying to figure out how to do that. So those are some big things that you need to watch out for seller financing and owner financing. But I'm going to say I love buying properties with owner financing. So many hurdles I don't have to jump. So many things I don't have to worry about. And I've even sold properties with owner financing as well because it was I was like, shoot, I'm going to make, if I sold the property right now, I may make $80,000. But if I did owner financing, I'll make $160,000. $60,000. Why knows? Might as well do that. I could use that money as, as general income coming in, pay for my food for my kids. So that's everything about owner financing. So find those owner financing deals. Use that pro tip of, of using Zillow and type in there in the keywords and in the description, looking for owner or seller financing. Do that as well. You'll do really, really well. And don't forget to get my free course, my free real estate investing course, where I'm going to show you how to invest in real estate, analyze deals, find properties, do it right, make sure you don't lose money. I'm going to show you how to do that. Go to masterpassiveincome.com forward slash free course. All right, guys, get out there. Start finding these owner financing deals. They're fantastic. You absolutely need them in your business. All right, guys, Dustin Heiner here with Master Passive Income. We'll see you.